Hey guys, what's up? This is Smash Adams here, and today I'm going to do an update on my Chaos Dragons. Now, um, before I go any further with the ban list, um, making it a lot easier for me to use the deck and gain more control with it as well, I figured with the um, changes I've made, it makes it more fun than just um, running the plain old um, Light Sworn Mill and all. But overall, I like the way it's going. It's really consistent. Love the um, changes that I've made, even though they were minor, especially with the ban list really being helpful. And it's awesome. So I'm going to show you the deck, explain the tech choices that I've added in, and without further ado, here's Chaos Dragons. To start off, of course, we've got, of course, the three Light Pulsar Dragons, self-explanatory. You need this to get your beat sticks into the, from your grave onto the field. Um, the uh, Dark Flare, the uh, Red Eyes, Darkness Metal. Mainly Darkness Metal because he's the main dragon to help set up with the OTK along with Light Pulsar Dragon. And if you pretty much get an entire field of beat sticks and your opponent has nothing to um, fall back on, you've got the game. Your, your main focus is OTK. But with Chaos Dragons in general, just playing Chaos Dragons, mainly just control and just um, pushing for game. Next we've got three Dark Flare Dragons, it's standard in this deck. I was going to cut one out, but I figured with um, Red Eyes still being limited and all, even though I'm still pissed about that, but hey, for a good reason, Konami's going to keep it that way, because with the new Red Eye support, it's going to be really difficult for them to bring that card back. Um, but anyway, besides that point, Dark Flare Dragon is a secondary um, target for Light Pulsar. Like, say if... Um, Red Eyes were to somehow get 101 and I could have something else to fall back on in the graveyard. Um, that way I wouldn't have to worry about the battle phase being in my opponent's favor or whatnot. You can always have this, bring it back, and then get a beat stick via your turn or their turn, and then some. Next for the dragons, we've got one Eclipse Wyvern, because you have two targets. I would run a second one, but with Chaos Ember Dragon not being eroded yet, I'm just sticking with one, and it's the best option in this case to just stick with one because running two can be a little inconsistent, and the second one can easily miss timing with the uh, banishing effect. One Divine Dragon, as it's a really awesome tech choice. I'm actually shocked that nobody's running this. Got to fix this glare up here. Sorry about that. If the quality's bad, anyway. Um, besides that. Divine Dragon Apocalypse is a really good tech choice. You can easily recycle your Dark Arm or any dragon in your graveyard and add it straight to the hand. So say if you wanted to get Red Eyes, have it um, just spam right onto the field along with another dragon. You can banish this, summon the Red Eyes, get another dragon, and possibly do more if you have a light and a dark target in your hand. And then just send them both to the grave for Light Pulsar, if you have another Light Pulsar in your graveyard. Now for the beat stick dragons, we've got one red eyes, the main guy to go for, and one dark arm as a secondary target for Eclipse Wyvern, like I mentioned earlier. You can easily get him out, um, and depending on your graveyard count with the dark monsters, just as long as you have exactly three, you don't have to worry about um, whether you mill more like right after that, but you can easily fuel his ability and then just pop a bunch of cards because with this deck destruction will always be in your favor if this guy's in your grave and then this guy's in your grave but mainly him because he's the guy to go for for the OTK because if you get the OTK and unless they stop it with gores or effect veiler or something like that that's that if they have nothing to stop it you've got it so that's it for the dragons now on to the chaos monsters we've got one BLS and three Chaos Sorcerers. Yes, the ban list has been good to us this format. I'm mad that they didn't eradicate Chaos Emperor Dragon yet, but when it does, look out. This this guy's going to be in there. But yes, three Chaos Sorcerers never really hurts in this deck. Um, especially with the new rule changes and all, it's understandable. And I've mentioned like in a couple of deck profiles, this guy's not as bad compared to BLS. Because he can banish any card via face up or face down. Whereas this guy, it has to be face up. But the compares, there's no, no comparing the two except for their abilities as far as which one is better than who. 
they both can't attack after they use their banishing effect. So in this case, odds will be in your favor with him, more so with him, because the dark count is a little bit higher than lights, but hey, it is what it is. But yes, Triple Chaos Sorcerers and 1BLS is always in your favor with this deck. And with uh, the November ban list being helpful and all, enough said. Anyway, now for the hand traps, we've got Triple Effect Veiler. Always good to negate stuff, especially with this format having a lot of monster effects going off. That's the main thing that's making um, decks really explosive, mainly monster effects, not mostly spells or traps, mainly monster effects. So Effect Veiler will always do you some justice depending on what deck you face. A lot of people don't run this, but I would, especially in a playset, because you never know when you're going to use them for a synchro material, or you never know when you're going to need that um, extra fodder for chaos food for your, your monsters. So, um, yeah, if you want to activate, if your opponent wants to activate something during their main phase or their second main phase, dump this card, negate their effect, and if you have a dark monster to spare and dump some stuff with um, Lumina just to get that raid in from your graveyard onto the field to get a Michael on board. Do that too, and then especially some of your Chaos Monsters, but Effect Veiler is always good in hand, no matter what the case. Three Gores. It's always good to have three. You never know what's going to happen. Two Trigodias. And two Honest. Self-explanatory. That's it for the uh, hand traps. Now on to the one tech choice, one plague spreader, because you do go for sixes in this deck, and you do go for eight synchro um, materials in this deck. So this guy's really helpful. I could add two more, but I wanted to add the space for other stuff, like the effect veiler and all. But yes, one never really hurts. I may add more, but we'll see later on. And now for the Light Sworns, it's, it's a no-brainer. We've got the three Luminas, the triple Raiden, and lastly, three Lilas to end the monster lineup. That's it. Now onto the spells. We got one Allure of Darkness because the Dark Count is pretty high, and it's good to have that plus two off of it, depending on which Dark Monsters you want to get rid of. Never banish um, Red Eyes. Especially in a case when you want to get a really heavy um, set of floaters under the field. But yes, Allure Darkness can be in your favor a lot of times. Two Charge of the Light Brigade, self-explanatory. You want to get that extra push to getting um, the Light Swarm count in your graveyard. Getting more stuff off, getting a Michael on board. You can always use this. And three Soul Recharges for the draw power. And mainly for milling. That's it for the main. Now on to the extra deck. We will start with the XCs first. I added one Dante, mainly because it's really good in this deck. And I know what you all are thinking. Oh, why didn't you add Tour Guide in here? You don't always need Tour Guide. That's what two Luminas are for. It's a generic card. You can make it with anything um, level 3 based. And the fact that he becomes a beat stick with every mill, um, times 500, um, yeah. This guy's broken. There's a reason why Burning Abyss got hit this format. Not mainly because of this card, but because of the um, cards that make it a thing. So anyway, yeah, one Dante. Now for the fours, we've got one Castell, one 101, and one Queen Dragoon. Mainly for the uh, explosive effect with Black Rose and having Light Pulsar, this guy can be really, really helpful at times. I like this card. And the fact that she can prevent dragons from being destroyed by battle, except her. Uh, yeah. It makes her an easy target, but it makes your dragon safe from harm until then. And now for the fives, we only run one five. One Volcasaurus for extra burn. And to just, um, have that Gaia dragon jump straight onto the playing field after you do the burn. And for the rank sixes, we got still one Exo Beetle. One Atom. Rarely sees play, but it is really helpful if you want to get that Red Eyes onto your field. And if you want to get something else on your field, like a Light Pulsar and such, any dragon, whatever you want, you got it. Strike Bouncer, and of course, one M7. 
And lastly, for the rank sevens, one Gaia Dragon. That's it for the XEs. Now on to the Synchros. We will start with the sixes, which is one Goyo Guardian. Really, really helpful during the battle phase. And the fact that these are 28 beat stick, even better. You can easily make this card with a Lila and a um, Plague Spreader. Easily. Now for the sevens, we got one Michael, one Black Rose. Really explosive with Light Pulsar's effect. And to go straight for game after that, if you have more stuff. This guy can really help you with a really explosive combo. Nuke their field, even though you nuke yours at the same time. Get some dragons on board, and then some. Michael's really helpful, too, for replenishing points if it gets destroyed as well. So, And plus, the fact that you can easily bring him back with the red eyes, even better. When Stardust, I know a lot of people find this a little overrated, but I like running him because he prevents destruction. And one Scrap Dragon. I want to try running a Beals in here, but I'm not sure what to take out yet. But this um, extra deck count really, really helps. But until then, I'm just going to work with what I have. So, hope you all enjoyed this deck profile. Please let me know what you think. Leave a like and a comment. And until next time, hope you all enjoyed. And I'm Smash Adams, signing out. Peace.